notes for this back to black you didn't see it um, i did not <laughs> so but i did the good old back to black are you a fan of amy winehouse like a music? i i love her music of course yeah good old amy winehouse Passed i, I love her music i don't know a lot about her yes me neither I didn't really and i'm guessing i'm not gonna learn anything from this movie <laughs> um not that you can't learn from a good old wikipedia search i would say but uh, we'll get into this all right. So, um, our next and final review of the day is going to be for a film I saw, but Nick did not get a chance to see, mm -hmm. and it's going to be for Back to Black, uh, Back to Black, which is the Amy Winehouse biopic. There also, um, from her title of her album, which is considered one of her best albums, one of her best works. There, it uh, that album kind of got her five Grammy wins there. Uh, and this biopic, you have Marissa uh, Albia. Abila, uh, who is playing Amy Winehouse there. Um, and she actually did a lot of training to learn how to sing like Amy Winehouse, uh, to learn how to perform like her. And I will say in this movie that overall is pretty mediocre, um, she is kind of one of the standouts in it, uh, which is a shame that this movie fails her the way it does. Um, this movie is directed by Sam Taylor Johnson, who uh, she directed Nowhere Boy, uh, which I did, I believe I did see Nowhere Boy. That is the John Lennon uh, biopic, um, and I remember liking it quite a bit. I thought the, the that movie was kind of nice. I thought it was, you know, had some decent things in it. Um, I thought the way it was done, and that's another mu musical biopic there. Um, so I was kind of a little bit interested to see how they would kind of do this and how she would kind of approach this uh, film here, especially Amy Winehouse, who even though she's one of those people who lived a very short life. Um, if you do not know, Amy Winehouse did pass away at the age of 27 due to substance abuse. Uh, but she left a really legendary career behind in that such a short span of time. I mean, really impressive when it comes to her vocals. She had this throwback type of style where it mixed kind of the old jazz, you know, her being a fan of like older musicians of her, you know, before her time of like the uh, the um, uh, uh, Ronettes there. And also people like Billie Holiday, um, you know, j really famous uh, uh, jazz musicians there. There's also some other, you know, contemporary people um, as well, like Mary J. Blige as well there. Um, so Barry had this, you know, really drew a lot of inspiration from a lot of classical soul jazz singers, uh, Diana Washington, uh, Sarah Vaughn there. Um, really, so her voice was very, very unique in the way she kind of sung, the way she performed. Have you ever kind of heard it? Um, this raspy type of way uh, that she kind of mm -hmm. spoke. Um, and a shout out to the actress for really learning how to really do that and, and really practicing and training there. Um, there we go. But uh, as far as like, you know, the biopic, the musical biopic, especially, it's been so done now, um, you know, with so many movies. We've seen very great examples and we've seen very poor examples of it. Mm -hmm. Great examples like Rocket Man recently, which I oh, thought yeah. was very good with uh, Taron Edgerton. And then we've seen some very poor examples. Um, like with Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, you know, with that, uh, and, and, and I think this is kind of more on the poor side. Um, mm. I'm not a huge Amy Winehouse fan. I'm not, I mean, I saw some Amy Winehouse stands, uh, on YouTube, saw some reviews of them kind of discussing and how much mm. of, they said that she would have been very, very much, uh, disappointed by her biopic about how they show things, and how they present things. Um, with a lot, and also a little bit of controversy surrounding this film, just in terms of, uh, the way it kind of presents her relationship with her uh, uh, husband there, Blake, uh, that's a, presented a large focus in this movie. And some people think it's a little bit of a cop out mm -hmm. the way they kind of handle the Blake character because, well, I understand it's a very toxic relationship that happened between mm -hmm. them um, and uh, things there that kind of left kind of poorly. And I don't know if that exactly lines up exactly what happened in real life. Again, I'm not uh, really you know big on there uh, about an, about her life. Um, just know the kind of the surface kind of information there. But I think if you wanted to dig a little bit more deeper into it, uh, Hunter, uh, who's in the chat right now, he says, watch the A24 documentary on HBO Max. Uh, don't watch Pin Up Girl, <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, so yes, there is a documentary on HBO Max called Amy, which you can watch right now, which I thought mm. about checking out after I saw the movie Back to Black, just to see. So this is, you know, document uh, documentary here detailing her life, uh, you know, and everything like that up until her passing. 
and I hear it's very good. I hear this was very good. Um, I think mm. was it? I want to say was it nominated for an Oscar for best documentary? I can't remember. Um, but mm, it might have. I, I'm uh, I'm always kind of fuzzy on the the Oscar nominations outside of like the big four. Yeah. So this uh, this came out in 2015. Um, there. Um, and yeah, you see kind of a lot of her life there. Um, and with this movie, it presents her relationship with Blake. And also her descent into a lot of kind of substance abuse, drugs, and alcohol. And this movie had the family's approval of it, uh, the White House. Uh, so yeah, usually it's kind of maybe a bad <laughs> sign that if you have the family's approval, because yeah, it's, yeah, it's like nine times out of ten when a biopic has the approval of the family and the estate, you're usually going to get something that's very watered down, very safe, something that is, you know, paying tribute to the legacy of that person, but is more with uh, with a sense of rose-colored glasses than, you know, something a little more honest. An example I use is uh, we had two different versions of Alfred Hitchcock uh, biopics with uh, Hitchcock, which starred Anthony Hopkins, and uh, <clears throat> I can't remember the title, but it was uh, starred Toby Jones as uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. And one had the approval of the estate and the other didn't. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's a good example there, the two kind of differences there of how they kind of portray people. And this was uh, Amy Winehouse, and this was Blake there, uh, which a guy with a fedora. I mean, come on now. I <laughs> with a fedora. Who the fuck would ever? <laughs> I could have fucking played that. You know, especially a fedora and a tank top. I mean, yeah. fedora and a tank top, and, you know, tattoos that look like they were pulled from the book that you get at a tattoo shop. Yeah. Tattoos that look like uh, when people draw on their desk in high school and shit. Tattoos, uh, that tattoos that look like Adam Levine's tattoos. <laughs> uh, and ja and Blake here is played by Jack O'Connell. That's who plays mm. Blake in this. Um, uh, and he was, I guess we just saw him. He was in Ferrari. We just saw him in that. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was in that. I mean, this is kind of just like I said, one of the situations where good lead performance. I, I do like Marissa mm. in this. Uh, you know, I think she's very good. But then everything else around her, I think, just fails. It just doesn't yeah. live up to her performance. Yeah, it kind of uh, it kind of sounds like we got a similar similar situation to uh, Bob Marley One Love, where I think Kinsley Benadir was the best thing about that movie, but everything else about it was just kind of, eh. Yeah, and I don't know if it's because she passed away so young because she joined the Twenty Seven Club. The Twenty Seven Club, if people don't know, there's lots mm -hmm. of that's like a curse they say amongst musicians who pass away very early. You know, Kurt Cobain, Janis Joplin, mm -hmm. Jimi Hendrix. Um, there that it's called the 27 Club. So I don't know if it's because she passed away so young that um, we don't really get a good passage of time, you know, because mm -hmm. like usually in a musical biopic, um, you know, you get the kind of little bit of like, okay, here's when she's the struggling artist and then boom, here's she, when she's the successful artist and then boom, here's when she has the big downfall. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's the rise, the fall, the rise again story. Yeah, it's just kind of so like bi so many biopics have and something that I think was parodied so well in uh, Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story that making a musical biopic is kind of just moot at this point. Yeah. Unless you're going to do something very creative with the structure, like with Rocket Band. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of understand not wanting to follow that template again, like you said, because it's been so heavily parodied, but it's hard to say like, Okay, when they say like you have the biggest record in the world, I was like, okay, when the fuck did that happen? I thought you were still a struggling artist, <laughs> you know? Like, wait, what, when did that kind of happen? So, uh, you know, because she's recording Back to Black, which is a fantastic album. I recommend people check it out if they ever heard Back to Black. It's a really amazing album there. Um, and then I was like, yeah, you get the biggest song in the world, and it's it's chart topping. Um, when she was performing, when it was the music stuff, I thought that was good. I thought that mm. was good, especially towards the end of the movie when she does her Grammy performance of uh, Rehab, which is probably her biggest song. A lot of people mm -hmm. probably know what that song is, um, which is her biggest song. Yeah, it's, it's either Rehab or it's uh, Valerie. Yeah, so that's probably, and they do the uh, the Grammy kind of performance she does there of it, and it, it looks spot on from, you know, I mean, when it actually happened, uh, which I thought was very, very impressive there. That's kind of maybe one of the best scenes in the movie. And just also just talk her talking about music. You know what I mean? Like Amy Winehouse from this movie shows she was a music junkie. You know, she loved jazz. You know, she mm -hmm. talked about her family. She was very much inspired also by her mother, by her grandmother there, who was very much that as well, who was a performer and singer. Um, and so just hearing her talk about all these different musicians and the inspirations, like I love that. I thought that was really great. 
uh, about how much of a music nerd she was and how much you know music made her feel. And it made me think like maybe if you went more of a Rocket Man route where the music mm -hmm. kind of told the stories of her life, mm -hmm. like kind of like that, maybe that would have worked better. Um, yeah, but yeah, but it's not our job to talk about the movie we wish we got. It's our job to talk about the movie we have. Yeah, and the movie we have is pretty mediocre and kind of <laughs> sad. Well, I understand not living up to the legacy of Amy Winehouse and the greatness uh, that was her and her music. Um, so for me with this, I would just kind of give it a, I don't know. I mean, I mean, even if you are big, because the people who are the biggest Amy Winehouse fans and stands, I don't think it seems like they're not really vibing with this too much. They're not liking it. So even if you are a big Amy Winehouse fan, it doesn't seem like you're going to really like it all that much possibly. So there'd probably be a skip it or burn it for them. Um, if you just say like, hey, I just want to see a good film. I want to check it out. I want to see something that is really good. Um, I don't think it works on that level either. <laughs> I think it's kind of not that interesting, really, the way they kind of do a lot of stuff. Um, so I would say it's kind of not that good there. But I, I do really think she's very good here as, as the lead performance. I think that she really puts a lot into it in the, the, the things here that she has. Yeah, e uh, even even the very little I've seen of Marissa Abela as Amy Winehouse, I'm curious to see her in other projects. Yeah, you know, so she does put a lot into it. Um, so I'm gonna go uh just for her performance, a low streaming. Just hmm. for that. Low streaming, just for her performance. Because I I like it. I think it's pretty pretty solid there. Um, and the other stuff she's been in. So she was in Barbie. Um she was in that. Oh. She was Teen Talk Barbie. Oh, uh, okay. Damn, you saying like, oh, like I know, I know. Like, man, you didn't, you no, didn't know. No. You don't know who the hell no, Teen I, Talk Barbie no, is. I I like, know. oh, I know. Well, fuck, I, of course, I don't know who the fuck Teen Talk Barbie was. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, she was also in She Is Love, Industry, Rogue Agent, Five Dates. Okay, so this is the first thing I really seen her in. I think this is like one of the really first big things that she's been in. There was this this biopic there, but, yeah, this um, is like her first like major project in Hollywood besides Barbie. Yeah, um, so yeah, yeah, that was my thoughts on Back to Black.